UDDI, um, Universal Description Discovery and Integration. It's essentially a way to store your WSDLs, a phone book of sorts that allows you to document exactly where your web services are or how to use them or just a, a central location for all your WSDL documents. Now, I find that this is very rarely used. It was initially intended to uh, be used in the public sector, meaning everybody was supposed to go and publish all their, their WSDLs and web services into these big public repositories hosted by Microsoft, XML methods, and, and IBM. Well, a lot of those have since died off, and there's been some adoption in the, the private sector. And again, this is uh, based on my experience, but not a lot at all. Instead, what people will traditionally do, instead of using UDDI, they will just ha simply have a web page on their site where they um, will host uh, their WSDLs and their XSDs and PDFs describing how to implement them, um, if there's any implementation details that are not uh, intuitive based upon the WSDL and the XSD. Uh, really, I, I don't see UDDI used that much in the industry at all. With that said, uh, each one of the big players has one of their own UDDI servers that you can use that's generally built into their product line. So for instance, IBM has one. Uh, Microsoft has one. There's free ones out there, JUDDI for um, a, a Java UDDI server. Um, it's sometimes used for uh, lookup information, but it's also used for uh, real-time processing, which I think is kind of silly because uh, what I've seen them used as is a, a way to uh, have a failback. So if you make a call to a web service and it isn't up and you, you time out or it, it fails immediately, you can call um, use UDDI to find a, a second URL to call and then make a call to that second web service. So you've got redundancy built in. Well, what happens if the UDDI server goes down and you're kind of out of luck? So the way, the mechanism that I like to use is to just simply describe a configuration physical file on the iSeries that my RPG program will read and um, have failover URLs right within that physical file. So calc price 1 wasn't successful. Okay, go to web service calc price 2. Okay, I connected to that one. Good to go. Um, future use. Here's where uh, something was just introduced way too early. If it would have been, if UDDI would have been introduced like two years ago, we'd be sitting very nice, and we'd have uh, plentiful repositories of um, all the different public web services available. And there's there's just a boatload of them out there. Here's a couple of examples. Um, Google's got some at this URL, and UPS has some, and there's, there's many, many more. But because it came on, UDDI came on too early in the game and wasn't exactly what people needed uh, at the time. People adopted their own methods and it's not that it's going the way of the buffalo, but it definitely hasn't seen as much adoption as it could have seen. So where does one start? You've got all these technologies, uh, still fairly complicated. How do you know where to start? Well, take one step at a time, one bite off at a time. Uh, the first approach that I'd take is simply to find an XML document of any sort, just as long as it's compliant, meaning it's got beginning and ending tags, and send that over HTTP. Don't use SOAP, don't use an XSD, leave namespaces out of the mix, don't use WSDL or UDDI. Just get XML going across the wire and uh, uh, compose it and parse it. Once you're comfortable with those, go ahead and create an XSD for your XML. So start defining the different data types for each element and attribute within your document. So it's more easy to hand off that document and say to a business partner, okay, here's my XML document. Here's the data types within it. Uh, enjoy. You can do, uh, once you create an XSD, you can um, simply create an instance of that XML uh, by right clicking on an XSD from WDSC and it'll produce an instance of that XML which makes it easy for uh, your trading partner to get a, a realistic view of exactly what that XML document looks like. And um, that's more of a best practices thing that I'm just noting there. And then as a final approach, what you want to do is um, use the WDSC graphical editors to create a WSDL which will more fully define exactly what you are offering um, from your iSeries for web services or I'm going to allow you to obviously then discover if somebody's wanting you to call their web service, um, you'll be able to discover from them what exactly you need to do to connect with their web service. So starting from simple to complex, that's the approach that I'd take uh, to developing web services. 
All right. Any questions, you can email me here. Here's a couple references. Uh, let me uh, take a peek at some of the questions that we have. Somebody wants to know what the phone number and password is. Sorry, I can't help you. Um, on the first couple examples, why is title within the name tag instead of tags of its own? Okay, so that's where you know it's really just a. It comes down to almost a, a personal preference. So if I could have definitely put title in its own element within the name tag, so let's actually go back to that. So here's an example of how I did, you know, the overbird element approach. You know, being that title isn't going to have any special characters. It's not going to be repeating. It's not a complex data type. I went ahead and stuck it there. Next question. If I didn't answer that enough for you, Skip, uh, you can go ahead and uh, email me. Um, in your XSD sample, why is residential at the bottom as an attribute instead of at the top like it is in the previous example? All right. Take a bit. Um, so here, this attribute is defined in the schema at the bottom, and I'm guessing uh, being asked why it's up here in the instance down here in the definition. Um, to be real, that's that's how the 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 GUI designer that I used to develop XSDs, that's where I put it. Um, one could probably cut and paste this and put it, let's see, right after the complex type and you'd be good to go. Um, I don't think it matters that this guy's down here or up here, just as long as it's within this complex type type definition. Next question. Does anybody else have any other questions? It looks like I'm all out of them. We could make up some here. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, you could. Um, all right. If you do have a question, um, please feel free to, to type it into Aaron uh, in the Q&A. If not, feel free, once again, as he said, to email him um, at uh, his address that he has shown. Um, and we are getting close to the end here, so I want to thank all of you for coming, and I want to extend a special thanks to Aaron Bartel for a great presentation. I'd also like to thank our web uh, conference sponsors, Business Computer Design, BCD, and Data Borough for sponsoring this year's educational tracks. Uh, and don't miss our, our next session for today at 3.30 p.m. Eastern titled RPG Does XML in V5R4 featuring John Paris from Partner 400. And if you have further questions, you can direct them to me at sjohnson at pentontech.com. We will provide recorded versions of our System I Network web conference sessions for 24-7 playback as soon as possible. And we will send out a follow-up email with the details for accessing those recordings as soon as the sessions are ready and online. And thank you again, Aaron. And that's it, everyone. Have a great day. Have a good day.